welcome to our meeting. It's, it's a pleasure to have you over here. Um, let's start by going, as usual, what we go through the background of people. You were born and raised in Iran, I assume. Actually, I was born in the U.S. and <laughs> raised in Iran, partially. So you were born <laughs> in the U.S. and raised <laughs> in Iran. How old were you when you were taken to Iran? I guess I was two. Two, so. okay. And how long did you spend in Iran? Um, I actually got my diploma, took concours, uh, got into Sharif, and then after two, three months, I was like, this is not working for me. Sharif <laughs> wasn't well. working for you, okay. No, no, not, not that, but you know, just, just the whole, um, you know, the situation with the government the and everything. The situation with the government and, uh, and all you, you know, being a woman, it's So you went to easy. Sharif, <laughs> that means you placed very high in the concours. I did. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Well, you guess. So we're going to ask you about it. What's, <laughs> what's your concours ranking? Uh, either 55 or 56. I don't remember. You don't remember either 55 <laughs> or 56. Well, that's rich. <laughs> that's that was good. not the most important number to remember in my life. So. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We ask that in jest from people and some people. So why do you characterize people with a ranking and concours? It says a, a lot of to the, about people, the way they answer the question. Um, so in Sharif, you were doing what? I, it was computer science, it was but computer. It was, I only went for three months, and then I basically quit and came to U.S. So. I, I beat you by that. I only went for uh, one week. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we have something in common over there. So what did you do when you came to the United States? Where did you go? I actually started in a junior college, West Valley, quite local, um, because you know I was trying to, you know, learn English, be comfortable, you know. Where was that junior college? Uh, it's actually in Saratoga. Oh, okay, over here, local. Yeah, local, quite local. Uh, and then I transferred to Berkeley, finished my bachelor there, and I stayed there, got my another master in statistics and a PhD in electrical engineering. Excellent. So let me introduce you to the audience a little bit. Most of these people have aspirations to start their own company and become rich. <laughs> so they, they depend on you and your advice tonight uh, uh, as, as to how to navigate <laughs> the, but, but for those people who are here uh, in, with that aspiration or looking for a job, I have good news for you. Tanya's LinkedIn page says, I am hiring. No, no, no. I was reposting somebody else who was <laughs> hiring, but I can refer you if you, you like. You can refer. <laughs> okay. My team, part of Amazon AGI Artificial General Intelligence, is hiring for applied scientists at all levels. Please reach out to me if you are interested. So you know who to see afterwards <laughs> if you have a resume. Uh, Amazon AGI, you're working there right now. Uh, I actually, <coughs> as of a couple of months ago, I moved to the shopping. Okay. Which is, you know, the core but business. But before, uh, so I've been at Amazon for close to five years. I started in Alexa, and Alexa is what turned into AGI, basically. Okay. Um, so I when you say Alexa turned into AGI, Alexa is not using AGI right now I at this moment, is it? Uh, they actually do use some large language models. Okay. Um, but H how large are we talking about? I, I don't think I can give so much <laughs> information, <laughs> but um, the, the, I don't know if for people who have followed the news, basically um, sometime after chat GPT, you know, was introduced, Amazon felt like every other, you know, big tech um, giant that they had to catch up. Yes. And so they decided that- So whips that came out. Yes. And so Alexa, given it had a lot of um, uh, basically conversational AI background and people had worked on that, it was kind of a good fit and they basically took all the science pieces from Alexa and now it's called AGI. So okay, that's and how Alexa is the target of what you are working on, essentially. Um, it used to be. Now I'm actually working on the um, shopping infrastructure. So when you're trying to you know, buy something on Amazon, um, all of that infrastructure is basically sitting within the bigger team that I mean. Okay, so let me get this right. You are creating an infrastructure that not only is going to be used for shopping, but, um, but Alexa is going to use it too. Alexa
Alexa doesn't use this one, no. Okay. <laughs> it's completely I'm different. having a lot of misses, so yeah, I'm no. sure I'll get no, to No, but I can answer questions about Alexa if you, I mean. Uh, we are interested to know something that it uh, is fundamental in the future of the industry and what, how we interact with it. So what can you tell us about Alexa and or shopping <laughs> in Amazon? Um, and well then I'm going to ask you, who do you think is going to win? Is it going to be Amazon? Is it going to be OpenAI? Is it going to be Google? Is it going to be I've Anthronics? never bet on anything. So, okay. <laughs> um, so I would say the biggest issue I've seen across the board, whether it's Alexa shopping, when it comes to using LLMs, is really the amount of um, resources they require. So. You can't, you know, just say I want to run a lot of experiments to see what works and what doesn't. You have to really think and kind of figure out what it is you want to do before you start, you know, using all the resources. Um, so that that to me is, I would say, one of the biggest problems. And I've seen more and more articles where people are saying it's best to go with smaller models that are basically trained for a very specific task. Mm -hmm. So Divide and conquer. Right. You do. When you say resor resources, you're talking about not only hardware that you're going to use, like NVIDIA hardware, but also energy that you're going to dispense in All of that, training yeah. and also using that. Well, I mean, uh, this is actually, uh, it was interesting to me when I joined, but um, you would think that Alexa is part of Amazon, they wouldn't be paying, but they do actually pay AWS like everybody else. <laughs> so well, it's internal. <laughs> internal I don't know if it goes from this pocket to the other, that I can't say, but um, oh. it, uh, <laughs> I'm just joking, I don't know. But um, I, I do know that that's a very big issue. You can't just you know start training models and using the GPUs because the cost goes up and, you know, so that doesn't get into the picture, how much uh, it, it electricity does. we're using? Oh, the electricity, uh, we are not following that, but it's like how much GPU are you using and, you know, okay. the cost of that is... Let me ask you a professional opinion about something that is happening outside Amazon. OpenAI, Google, Apple, Meta's Llama, Antronics, Reflection AI, which one of these horses do you think you would bet on? Let me add something that Amazon has invested at the rate of seven billion dollars in Antronics. So yeah. Anthropic, you mean? Anthropics, yes. Yeah. Well, I think so that, that should be the good <laughs> indication, right? I, I honestly don't know. I mean, what, what are we betting on? Like, what, what is the end goal you're saying? I, I, to me, it, there's no it's not a race to get to a certain thing. It's just that the technology is evolving and I feel that every company is to some extent contributing to it, so. Well, every company is contributing to it, but not, uh, Amazon hasn't in invested $7 billion in all other companies. Um, Anthropics is a unique well, one. Well, they couldn't go with open AI, right? That was taken. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Actually, I, I read that OpenAI had approached AWS for partnership, and they Didn't Amazon work. said, no, thank you. We don't want to give you free resources. So. Oh, I see, I yeah. see. What do you think of Apple? What are they doing? I don't know much. They're very secretive, but um, one thing I was actually reading today because, you know, there is the new chat GP whatever that OpenAI put out that does kind of audio to audio. Um, I was reading uh, this little article that um, people were suggesting whoever can partner with Apple to use this new model um, as part of the you know, voice assistance on Apple, that's like a big win. So. And it wouldn't Just be because Alexa. the name <laughs> Apple is behind it, but 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 well, but you know, because you know everybody uses Apple, and you know, it, they have the capability of have, gathering yeah. a lot of data from people. Example: yeah. um, large language model capabilities are linked to their costs, which is 
data, training, hardware, and energy. Current models are about $100 million, the current models we have. And the goal seems to be $100 billion, a thousand times, in a, matter of a short matter of a couple of years. What are the implications of this significant computational resources and energy consumption that is going to be spent to get this goal fulfilled, in your opinion? To me, it's really the environmental impacts more than anything. And I know, you know, being in high tech, you maybe you don't care as much about that. <laughs> but I think we should because um, it is not just a tiny amount of impact we are talking about here. We're warming so the yeah. planet <laughs> up, yes. So, so you're worried because you have small children? <laughs> no, even for myself. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, Areas of uh, AI that is going to be concentrated on for Amazon, what are those? Well, actually, a, about a couple of months ago, I don't know if uh, some of you already have the beta version, uh, they released Rufus um, if you're shopping on your phone. And mm -hmm. it's kind of a conversational agent to help you with your uh, shopping needs. So uh, that's a big area focus and trying to refine that and make it a much better assistant. So and when you say much better as consumers, uh, what should we expect or what should we avoid? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you should be worried about anything, but um, I would say just with any other LLM, it's you, you never know if it's hallucinating or not. Mm -hmm. So um, that, I would say, as a consumer is probably something you want to be aware of. There was this cartoon in New Yorker that they said Amazon has a new plan. Every week they send you randomly and you can keep it or <laughs> else you can send it back. <laughs> could, could that be fulfilled? If, if, if the, the machine comes back and says, well, this, this is a way to enhance the sales, <laughs> would you go for it? I'm not making those decisions. Get a surprise. <laughs> okay, you're not making no. those decisions. No. What decisions are you making? Well, par I mean, I, I'm not sure. Am I making you uncomfortable with these questions? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, just, I mean, just tell me if there is an area that you, you get very, very uncomfortable. We, we together, we go through <laughs> it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I mean, as you know, like. Uh, there are secrets. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, no, I wouldn't call it secrets, but I, but I would say what you know, wh where um, me and my team are focusing is really trying to optimize a lot of these models that are in production because um, you know as you add more and more features you're adding more latency and there's no free lunch so you have to cut from somewhere else mm -hmm. so as you know you start adding you know, like to Rufus you add more and more features you need to take you know from another part or optimize another part so zero sum game yeah. basically so that's where we are focusing to see what are different things we can do whether it's um, it, you know just working with the algorithms doing something with the data like all different aspects that you can consider excuse me can you hold your microphone a little bit closer <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure Sorry. they can hear you but this would be yeah. yeah so that that's where we are focusing right now is the, in the plans to humanize Alexa, is there any plan to add humor to it? She actually has quite a bit of humor. It does? Yeah. H how do you inject that to it? Oh. How do you plan <laughs> for it? It's, um, I think they have some, you know, existing basically scripts and it just, you know, depending on the context. Um, Can you give me an example on that? Yeah, my daughter was uh, asking Alexa, what is two times two? And she said, four. What do you think about, like, do you think I'm not smart? <laughs> so, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, and what are the, the effects of those humor injected into those conversations? Uh, I guess it depends on the person. I enjoy it. It makes it more, you know, more like a human than just answering questions. What other things are you doing to add humanity to the voices that comes through the machine? I don't know about humanity, but there's a lot about just being able to follow through the conversation with that 
voice assistant because it's not, um, especially with you know Alexa and the devices, it's not as easy to keep track of all the, because you, you want to make recommendations to the user, but you also need to keep track of the dialogue history. So previous conversation. Previous, yeah. yeah. So that, that's basically where most of the effort is. I'm trying to see how my uh, experience as a consumer will improve besides humor, besides referring to the previous things that I have said. Is there any efficiency in the system that you, you can increase to increase my satisfaction? Is, this, is there a goal defined like that that we can do? Well, I would say even with the conversations uh, with LLMs, I think they are much better at kind of answering at each turn. So that would be, to me, that is the gain to the customer. Because every time, you know, um, you're basically interacting with LLM and they're much better at being able to, you know, follow this conversation and come up with good answers and kind of steer the conversation in a certain direction, so. Uh, is there any plan to get into educational areas with the capabilities that you already have in Alexa and with the LLMs. In other words, if your daughter asks two times two is four, uh, is that a clue that uh, Alexa could say, well, do you need help with your homework? I can help you with that. Th they even have some of those, not necessarily help with homework. I don't think parents would be too happy with that, but. Um, well, uh, as a tutor, you know, that, that <laughs> everybody would be happy with having a tutor <laughs> in your pocket. Your free young. tutor. Yeah, well, it's, it's not a free lunch. <laughs> How about health uh, areas? Is Alexa going to venture into detecting whether or not, you know, I'm coughing when I am talking to her, I guess. Yeah, it's a her. Uh, and uh, she can recommend something like cough syrups. I can send you a cough syrup right away in the mail. Um, you can, but what I like to point out is uh, people are also very worried about having Alexa in their homes in general because they feel that their conversations are being sent back and you know everybody can listen to it. So I personally think it's a fine line. You want to help the customer, but you want to keep their trust and you don't want to make them too uncomfortable. So if she becomes too smart for you and like you feel that she knows everything, then so you yeah, have to <laughs> yeah. So you have to program dumbness into Alexa so <laughs> people don't feel threatened. My point is that you know a lot of these things either the customer should opt in so that you know when it happens they're not startled mm -hmm. or. You, you don't want to have it there without the customer being aware of what's happening. That's my point, so. But, but, but if we fast forward like 10 years in the future, this is gonna be a mute, moot point. The computers will know everything about us and they will. I think they already know quite a bit. Okay. <laughs> so I don't think you need to go 10 years uh, in the future, but it's, it's also a matter of perception, right? I'm not yeah. saying this is fact, I'm saying it's a matter of people's perception about Alexa. So if you make her too smart and too useful, people might think that you know their privacy is getting invaded in their house. True, so. but eventually people will have to get used to this. And the companies that are at the forefront of making people comfortable with what they know about them, they would win. So you can't just lag behind pretending that. I'm not saying Alexa is lagging behind. I'm just saying it's, uh, you know, you kind of have to be careful when you start adding these features. Okay. Like, you know, having the disclaimer, making sure, for example, they opt in or all sorts of things. One other area that I would like to uh, touch on before we go to the questions in the audience uh, is integration with your third party services and APIs. Are you thinking, working on that to, open Amazon systems, uh, uh, AI systems, or you know, assistance, to general uh, companies that can plug in into their AP API and do something with them? That is actually, I think, a big, um, at least from my understanding, that is actually a big part of what AGI is trying to do right now, having basically these 
modularized um, APIs that you can kind of plug and play with mm -hmm. um, for virtual assistants. And that's it, it being it is being designed into the system that you're working on. It's yes. So that's the appropriate question that I can ask next. Next, what do you suggest? What do you advise people who are sitting in this room and are aspiring to have a piece of action in the future? What kind of a technology should they go for, or what kind of a education should they uh, strive for? in order to be able to do something that, for example, Amazon can link into? What should they study? What should they learn? Well, a lot. I mean, are you asking if they should, you know, really get into the nitty gritty of LLMs or? Um, because I don't I mean know. <laughs> you're, you're the expert in the field. You can I, tell Well, me. I'm not expert in everything. Um, well, what are you So, for example, you like, you know, to me, one of the biggest applications is healthcare. Yes. And I'm sure um, the next uh, speaker can Mr. You know, give, will yeah, respond. Yeah. Him, okay. But um, that, I mean, if my personal opinion, I think that's where people should focus. It's a harder one to win over just because of patient privacy and all those things. So I would say, you know, getting kind of educated about all the issues that. Um, healthcare has, like there's insurance, there is, you know, in the hospitals, um, th there are so many different components. So you can kind of just look at that system and pick one that you think you can come up with a solution for and then go from there. So in general, you're saying something about healthcare that uh, would be capable of be, uh, being plugged into other systems like Amazon right. to be able to. Okay. Um, we have a few minutes for maybe two to three questions. And if people raise their hands, do we have a microphone? I, or I can use this microphone. Hold on, that gentleman over there. Oh, let me use this one for now. It's on. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Said Karimovati, and uh, I'm uh, engineering manager with Amazon AWS Hardware Engineering. And uh, like, I just want to add like two kind of short topics to what? Uh, questions only. Only questions? Only questions. Okay. I want you, we want you to come over here and add your questions. Sure. Uh, look, no, that that was not a question. I have That's okay. Thank you. Gentlemen over there. Thank you. Uh, I'm Amin Farhang. Uh, I'm an intern at Mind the Bridge uh, as an innovation advisor. My question was. Uh, uh, how was, uh, we know one of the corner stores of the success of Amazon was using LLMs, using, uh, using uh, machine learning, uh, but I wanna know like how different the organization was or the organizational structure before and after January 2024, after GPTs were out and now uh, everybody's talking about AI and uh, LLMs. Uh, because you were basically, uh, AI was a thing before that, and especially mm -hmm. it was something special for Amazon, but everything changed after uh, the, the rise of AI. Uh, I really want to know what has changed in the company, in the organizational structure, how roles are different, and how's the, uh, how's the vision is different. It's actually interesting you're asking that question because um, we did, within Alexa, actually have a very similar technology to ChatGPT. But at the time, before like go, I don't know, eight months before ChatGPT was released, people were like, well, you know, we don't really need to focus so much and spend resources on this. There are other things we need to get to. So that kind of was put on the back burner. And yes, ChatGPT comes out and they're like, oh shoot, <laughs> now we need to catch up. So in response to that, um, I mean, as I said, Alexa was split, now there's AGI, there's a lot of effort. 
uh, even on the AWS side, I'm sure <laughs> you can probably even add a lot more there, but you know, they're constantly adding more and more you know, um, LLMs there, making it easy for people to use. So um, it, it has changed quite a bit, um, but to some extent is more a, a reaction um, instead of like taking a step back and saying what is you know, our eventual goal. So, and I think that's happening across the board. It's not just Amazon. So. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Last question with a gentleman over there. Salam Khan, Doctor. Thank you so much for all your sharing with us today. I'm really enjoying it. My question is circle. Please na state your name and sure. your affiliation first. Yeah. My name is Ryan, and uh, I'm a project engineer. I work in the construction industry here in the Bay Area. My question is circled around trust. So what is the, the golden recipe or at least success tactic you found in earning and maintaining consumer trust in a lot of this novel AI that we're seeing? Or is this really irrelevant because we might be using AI and we don't even know what's under the hood? So. I guess my question is, do you see this even being an important topic as we're getting more advanced? And uh, what is the approach that is getting success in this area? I think trust is to some extent an issue because at the end of the day, you want the consumers to use your products, right? And yeah. if they don't trust you, that's an issue. But at the same time, um, it, as you said, it just takes time. People need to get used to it slowly over time, but um, one thing that I think Amazon does well um, is that they are very, very uh, strict about the data, the customer data, and you know, who can even access it. Like, it, it's really uh, difficult to, you know, even like, get that data, if, if, even if you want to train a model, for example. So um, that they do a good job of. And as I said, like they are pretty good about uh, kind of informing the customer of what they're doing. And most of the features are opt-in instead of, you know, just turning it on and saying, oh, you know, as you said, under the hood, things are working. So usually, you know, there is more of go to the app and turn on. So that that's how they try to keep that trust, I would say. Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Ms. Tanya Rusta. Thank you very much for spending the time to come over here on behalf of Plug and Play, Persian Tech Network, uh, the Amidi Foundation, the Amidi Group, and the Iranian community. I thank you for spending the time. Before I go, us. I have a question for you. So <laughs> who would you bet on? <laughs> uh, well, I, I would probably bet on the uh, moral compass that uh, Anthropics people have okay. put forward. Yeah. Okay. They, they're more <laughs> aware of the dangers of AI than, than Sam Altman is. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.